Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Tech News product review. Today's product is the 100 amp hour Amper Time Lithium Iron Phosphate Drop-In Replacement Battery. These batteries are designed as a direct replacement for old-fashioned lead-acid deep cycle batteries in RVs and campers, solar arrays, and other projects where deep cycling and long cycle life are required. This is Amper Time's most basic 12 volt 100 amp hour offering that will fit inside of a standard Group 31 size battery box. But is it any good? Let's find out. This battery is a 12.8 volt 100 amp hour battery. You multiply volts times amps to get watt hours. That makes this 1,280 watt hours in capacity. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery using grade A cells, good for at least 4,000 cycles or 11 years if cycled daily. As for size and weight, this fits in a standard size 31 battery box. It's just under 13 inches by seven inches by 8.5 inches at just under 24 pounds or about a third of the weight of a typical lead acid battery. Now the BMS inside the Amper Time is 100 amps. That is both charge and discharge rate. So that means you can pump 100 amps in and take 100 amps out. Again, using volts times amps equals watts. That means you can pump 1280 watts in or take 1280 watts out. As for series and parallel ability, this does support 4S 4P configurations, which means four in series times four in parallel for a total of 16 batteries. That would be a maximum of 48 volts at 400 amps for a total capacity of 20.5 kilowatt hours. Now, as for the quality of the case, this is typical ABS plastic all the way around, and it is IP65 weather resistant, so it can be left out in the elements. As for protections, this does have overcharge, over discharge, as well as overcurrent and short circuit protections. While this does not have low temperature cutoff, it does offer high temperature protection. It can be charged from 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit and discharged from minus four degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And those specifications are typical for most lithium iron phosphate batteries that don't have internal heaters. Those, by the way, are crazy expensive. Now as for features, yeah, it comes with some. It does have this vinyl strap handle, which is permanent, but you can actually take it off if you want to. It does come with the hardware, so it does come with metric hardware. I think these are M8s or M10. And it does come with insulating covers, which I have lost. And it does come with a typical paperwork, warranty, user manual, and stuff like that. Now, speaking of the warranty, Amper Time does offer a five-year limited warranty on this product, which is pretty darn good for such a cheap battery. And of course I took the Amper Time into my secret laboratory where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including a single fisted Bang! battery capacity test. Now, since this battery can only be discharged one way, that makes it a DC battery capacity test. That's why I only got a single fist. It did score 1,283 watt hours out of a rated 1,280 for 100% capacity as rated. That means you're not getting cheated by the batteries inside. Now let's check out some of the other tests. This is the BMS discharge rate test where we find out how much power can we pull out of the Amper Time battery. Now the Amper Time battery does have a 100 amp BMS, which allows for 100 amps charge and 100 amps discharge. So that means you can actually pull 1280 watts from the battery or put 1280 watts into the battery. That's supposed to be the theoretical limit. Now, of course, they do let you go over a little bit for a certain period of time because it's not a hard cut off at 100 amps. But let's go ahead and test this Amper Time battery and find out how much can we actually pull before it shuts down. And as always, we're using the Sun Gold Power 3000 watt inverter. 
which is more than powerful enough to max out this battery. I have two heaters on the floor, but that also means none other than dun, 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 the solar degenerator. Now the battery is fully charged, so we will get the maximum amount of power. So with the heater on the floor, I'm already pulling 130 plus amps. Now let's go ahead and add solar degenerator to that and see how much more can we pull before the thing shuts down. 150, 160. 170, 180, 200, 220, 250. Oh, we're getting a beep. 260, 270. The inverter is beeping, which means the voltage must be dropping. We are now at almost 300 amps. The battery hasn't shut down yet, but we're getting a low voltage warning. So let's stop it there. Now we know the amper time can handle a surge of up to 300 amps. We're gonna go ahead and push this a little bit further by actually doing a timed test. As you can see here, I'm currently pulling 150 amps from the battery and I have my timer here. So let's go ahead and crank this thing all the way up and see how long it takes for it to shut down. Okay, there we are at 300 amps and it shut down right away this time. So I think the limit was 300 amps. We were pushing about 290 before. Now let's go ahead and see if we can hold 150 amps and for how long. Here we are at just over 150 amps, about 160. Go ahead and start the timer. And here we are five minutes pulling almost 160 amps or 1900 watts. So we're able to pull 160 amps for over five minutes without any overheating or BMS shutdown. Let's take that up to 200 amps and see if the situation changes. There is gonna be a cutoff point where the BMS just doesn't wanna handle that kind of load. Okay, there we are at 200 amps. Let's start the timer, see how long we can go at 200 amps. Okay, there we go. We didn't even make it one minute at 200 amps and the BMS shut down. You can see the power completely went out. So now I'm gonna go ahead and reset this and do a recovery time check. As soon as the power comes back on, we'll make note of how long it took for the BMS to turn back on. So after several minutes of sustained running at 200 amps, I finally got the battery pretty hot. You can see here, almost 115 degrees. It's pretty warm. Cables are definitely warm. I was running at about 200 amps output. Battery finally conked out. Everything turned off. So now I gotta wait for it to cool down. But at least we know the temperature protection, the high temperature protection does in fact work on the amper time. Okay, we're back. It took just under 15 minutes for the amper time battery to cool down and turn back on. You can see right here, it's back online, which means the overheat protection that's built in does in fact work. It safely shuts the battery down safely turns itself back on in a very short period of time. So thumbs up on build quality. So just a quick recap, it can run five full minutes, no problem at 150 amps. It can run one minute at 200 amps before shutting down. And it can run up to 300 amps for a very short period of time. And it will shut down immediately if you try to pull more than 300 amps. That takes us to the next test, which is the BMS charge rate test. Okay, so the main inverter charger is maxing out around 84 amps. Okay, there we are, just passing 100 amps. Let's go ahead and add the third charger to the mix. And we're at 107 amps. So this can do about 85 amps. This can do 10 amps. And this can do 20 amps through the solar controller. Basically what I'm doing is I'm using a variable voltage charger at about 60 volts to pump into this Renogy MPPT. And I'm using this straight up from 14.8 uh, volts. All that's going into the battery. So there we are holding 107 amps, no problem. Go ahead and get the stopwatch back out. I'm gonna let this charge for at least five minutes just to make sure that number is not a fluke. Okay, here we are at five minutes and it's still running at about 105 amps. This means the Amper Time 100 amp hour battery passed all the tests. So what do I think about the Amper Time battery? Well, there's really not much to dislike about it. It's a solid battery with capacity exactly as rated using grade A cells and a quality BMS that lets you push the limits, but it's still safe if you decide to go too far. You can do a 4S, 4P configuration, so you can make huge capacity 48 volt systems out of this if you so desire. And most importantly, the price is right, especially with my discount. Now my one and only gripe with this battery is, of course, it doesn't have low temperature charging protection. 
Granted, if you're actually using the battery, the cells aren't likely to go below freezing anyway, as long as you keep the battery in an insulated area. But I really don't understand why so few battery manufacturers don't include this cheap safety feature. It would literally only cost a couple of bucks to put a sensor in that would shut off charging ability below freezing. Now they do offer a five year warranty on this. So if you manage to wreck your battery north of the Arctic Circle, no doubt they're gonna have to replace it. Now these drop-in lithium batteries with small 100 amp BMSs are not designed as starter batteries. So don't buy one of these thinking you can throw it in your diesel truck or hot rod and use at the start. They're not designed to pull those kind of amps. You can use them for small trolling motors and stuff like that and other loads under 100 amps and run it all day long. The recommended inverter size for a single 100 amp hour battery is 2000 watts. Now I'm sure some of you are going, that math doesn't add up. Now even though the output on this is only 1280 watts, you still want an inverter to handle startup loads like an air conditioner or a refrigerator. If you would put a 1,000 or 1,500 watt inverter on this, it might be not enough to start up an electric motor, which a lot of people are buying batteries like this, you're putting them in their RVs. They got air conditioners, microwaves, and refrigerators that need to be started up. So don't undersize your inverter on this. Just because the battery can't handle it, you should have an inverter that's a little bit more than you really need. Now, if you get two of these batteries and wire them in parallel, then you can run about 2,500 watts output, and I would suggest a 4,000 watt inverter in that case. I do have some inverter models on my product page at hobotech.tv slash Amazon. Now as for charging options, any charger that can output 14.4 to 14.6 volts will fully charge this battery with no issues. You don't need a special lithium charger or a lithium solar controller. Just be aware if you do actually kill this battery totally dead to 0% to the point where it powers off, the BMS doesn't have any power to turn back on. So you'll need to actually jumpstart it with another 12 volt source to get it to turn back on. And once you jumpstart it, you're good to go. That's really the main reason to have a lithium capable charger is that it'll do that jumpstart for you automatically. Most of the time your inverter isn't gonna let you discharge this all the way to zero anyway, or it'll start beeping or acting up crazy long before you kill this battery. So I've never had a situation in my van where I have lithium batteries where I killed these to zero, they shut off. It's just never happened. And I don't have a lithium charger in my van. Now here comes the best part, product price. For a limited time, you can get the AmperTime 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate for only 369 bucks. If you use the link below and the code in the description, at checkout, that's only nine cents per cycle for 4,000 cycles. And compared to the cheapest Walmart Marine battery at 25 cents per cycle, which is only gonna last you a few hundred cycles at best, if you've been waiting to take the plunge into lithium batteries for your RV, it's unlikely that prices are gonna come down much more than they already are in the current market. Just like those old beer commercials used to say, it's Miller time? Well, guess what? It's Amper time. Now, Amper time knows that not everybody wants or needs a 100 amp hour battery. Some of you want two, three, 400 amp hours, or maybe even 50 amp hour batteries. Well, Amper time has all those on their website, and they did decide to offer a discount code for all Hobotech viewers for every product across the board and I will put that in the description of this video if this model isn't what you actually need. They do have bigger and smaller models. If you are interested in the Amper Time batteries, links and discount codes are in the description of this video, and I'm also gonna put a link at the bottom of the screen along with a QR code that you can scan on your mobile device. It'll take you directly to Amper Time store page, don't forget to use the Hobotech discount codes in the bottom of the screen and in the description in order to take advantage of the Hobotech discount. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box.
If you search for a soldier is a pain in the neck, go to YouTube and watch Hobo Tech. Cause he's a test in this and he's a probing that. He's even been probing, probing his cat. And if you want to get all the soldiers back, go to Hobo Tech. Yeah! RV Golf Guy, Von Rob, Brian Weaver's Johnson, Jason Soroka, Dr. Steve Eisenberg.